Do you think it's possible for a worm to understand human thoughts, human life? Can a human being understand the thoughts of angels? In this chapter, I will show you how it's done. I was told it was impossible to visualize the fourth dimension, but I tried anyway. I believed that with enough exposure to the idea and familiarity with the phenomena, I could manage to grasp at least a natural, instinctual understanding. Is it possible to visualize the fourth dimension? Is it possible to turn your eyes into a direction that you can't physically point to and look beyond the physical world? How do you learn things that are beyond human experience? Things of angels, things of demons, things beyond what your eyes can see and beyond what your mind can grasp. Do you think it's possible for a worm to understand human thoughts, human life? Can a human being understand the thoughts of angels? If you ever thought that your mind was simply incapable of understanding certain things, put away that attitude, let me give you some relief. Because in this chapter, I will show you how it's done. I will show you how to access the inaccessible, the realms of arcane knowledge, the truths of the universe that are kept from human minds, matters that are concealed, great and occult things that you do not know. The idea that inspired me to create this element was a simple mathematical curiosity to visualize the fourth dimension. Now, if you have no familiarity with what that means, I encourage you to look into it. A good resource in the public domain is a book called Flatland by Edwin Abbott. Here we have a figure that you'll recognize most commonly drawn by kids in elementary school. And it's a square and another square with overlapping corners. And you connect the corresponding corners And because you're too familiar with the concept of three dimensions, your mind will instantly recognize this as a cube. But realize, this is not a cube. This is flat. If this isn't a cube, then what is it? Here we have an actual cube that when you shine a light on it, you'll see it cast a shadow that looks just like the figure drawn. This is a cube. This is not a cube. This is a, two, this is a picture. This is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object, a shadow of a higher dimension. So the question is this. If you've never seen a cube, if you've never seen a third dimension, if you've never been exposed to a third dimension, if all you've ever seen, if all you've ever lived is flat, if all you've ever experienced is flat, how do you gather this from this? If you've never even touched a cube, how do you use this to visualize this? How do you use the shadows to grasp a higher dimension? To help explain this, allow me to allude to an experience that I've often had. When someone is teaching me something, I often learn it faster than they're teaching me or I grasp the concept more deeply than what they're telling me. So that when they are teaching me something I've never heard before, once I grasp it, I can often predict what they are going to say next. Sometimes I end up supplementing their own understanding of the topic. Then they probably just assume I already knew all along or something. But the important part is not that I'm able to do this. No, that doesn't make me special. I'm sure you've been able to do this yourself as well and I can count way more times in which I haven't been able to do it. The important thing is this, that I notice when it happens and my response to it. My response was often that of frustration. Frustration because I saw it and I knew its value, but I didn't know what it was or how it happened. And the frustration of knowing that if only I knew how I did that, I would have access to so much more. My learning would increase. But because I didn't know what it was, I could not. 
So after many times of experiencing this, I set myself to catch this fleeting experience, to hold it in my hands and take it apart. So here it is. Here's how it happens. Step one, observe the shadow. This being a metaphor of your limited world, I'm saying observe what you see. Look around you, observe what you see. Don't lie to yourself. Don't act like you can see the spiritual world. You can't see the spiritual world. You can't see higher dimensions. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason why you're limited. Your physical eyes see physical phenomena. Now look. Look and you'll see the shadow. You'll see how the cube has different configurations. You'll see how it has the overlapping squares like the figure drawn on the right you'll see that it has a configuration of a, a square within a square or composite triangles one that looks like this and these are all configurations of a three-dimensional object notice also that when it moves how some corners move to the right and others move to the left how some sides shrink and disappear, and others appear and grow. And the more you become familiar with the features, and the more you learn the patterns of the dynamics of the shadows, your mind will eventually reach a point in which it tries to synthesize, to simplify. And soon the object, the three-dimensional object, will be a lot simpler to grasp than all these complex movements on a two-dimensional plane. Whenever things appear chaotic, whenever things appear random, see if you can find the law to the pattern. See if you can find the principle. Do you see this law? Do you see this law to the pattern? Don't lie to yourself! Don't pretend like you understand something when you actually don't. I have to emphasize this because this is a case in which you don't really know what you're supposed to understand. This isn't self-hypnosis where you trick yourself into believing that you understand something when you actually don't. So get out of that mentality. This isn't magic. This is straight logic. If you don't understand the logic in this, if this still feels a mystery, then you don't really understand. If you don't understand, have the courage to accept that. And if you do understand, have the sense to check yourself. Have the humility to doubt yourself. This isn't a game. This isn't pretend. If you want to pretend, what am I even doing here? Whatever, I'm here now. And I'm not going to let you pretend. You're going to get this right. Don't you know that by lying to yourself, you only hold yourself back? Lying to yourself only holds you back. That's what my frustration said to me. Beware of apophenia. You're never going to see anything more than the shadows. What you see is what you see. So don't expect to see anything more than what you see. But there comes a moment. When you reach that moment in which everything you're looking at just clicks together. That moment of clarity that allows everything to make sense with itself. That's the moment that you've reached a higher level of understanding. By analyzing the shadows of higher dimensions, you're able to gaze at the shadows and perceive the higher dimensions. Whenever things seem random or chaotic, look for the pattern, but beware of apophenia. See if you can find the principle or a law to that pattern, then test it by using that principle or that law to predict phenomena. You can't see God, but you can see his yields, his effects. And everything in nature is a hint of his own character. Everything that exists that you see is a shadow of his own hand. You can't see the wind, but you can see the stuff that moves. And by seeing the stuff that the wind moves, you can visualize the wind's shape and its size. You can't see DNA, the blueprint of life, but you can see the building. And from that building, you can discover that blueprint. From looking at nature, you can discover God. From looking at the parts, you'll be able to synthesize the whole and you'll see that the whole is greater than the parts that you see. You'll see that the higher dimension is more than the shadows that you can observe. 
by understanding what you can understand, by seeing what you can see, by experiencing what you can experience, by living what you can live, and nothing more, nothing more. By doing this, you can discover more. You can discover the principle, the higher dimension.